today's video, I'm gonna be building my DIY four tire inflator kit. Um, I showed you guys that on my last video for using the Flexilla core. I'm gonna show you a little bit of everything, how I'm gonna do it. This is super affordable. Everything was mostly purchased on Amazon. I'll put some links in the description. I think all this ran about under 160 and I just need one kit. But the first thing you wanna do is measure your vehicle. This is my Land Cruiser LC80. You just wanna measure your wheelbase. Mine is 120. Uh, you need to cut it in six pieces. So you need to cut two big one, and then you need to cut one, you need to cut two small one that goes from the to the front tire, and then you need to cut two that are, goes from here to here. This one, I'm gonna make it one, so I'm gonna cut two 135. I'm gonna make it a little bit longer, 135 inch. That should be long enough to do like full size pickup. Two 135, 230 inch. You can do a little bit bigger. I might do like 35 inch. And the reason you wanna do that, because if in the future, if you need to repair it or, if, or the ends get cut or something, <clears throat> in the future, you can cut it and repair it and don't run short because 50 feet is 600 inches. Maybe I'll do 135, 140, who knows, um, 35 inch. And then the one that goes from um, the front tire to your manifold, I haven't measured it yet, but I'll probably, I'll, I'm gonna have tons of extra. So I might do like five feet or six feet. But that's basically what you want. You want six pieces, two, 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 and you just gotta measure what size you want. On the 50 foot flexible car, when you buy it, it comes with these usable ends already. I already went ahead and put the tire chucks on both of the ends. I'm gonna chop these two in for the front tires. These are gonna be my 30 inch to 35 inches. And then after that, we'll have the bare hoses and we'll work with the rest of it. So these tire chucks, are pretty nice they just pop into your valve stems you don't screw them on like the old style one these just you just pull them down put it in and then lock it in place so i went ahead and put some thread sealing already so these two the first one we're gonna cut are the small ones went ahead and measure on my table put 36 inch and then i measure from here not the chuck i measure from this end <clears throat> and again this is the front wheels you it doesn't have to be exact, guys. It could be a little bit long. It could be a little bit shorter. <coughs> well, you don't want to be short. You can be a little bit long. It doesn't matter. <coughs> you want to use a nice sharp blade. Hopefully, this one's still sharp. And make a very straight cut. People also debate it about, hey, should you go with quarter inch or three eighths? And the reason why you oh, the reason why you don't want to go with three eighths is that. This compressor can only push so much air that it's not worth going three eighths. Quarter inch fuel, quarter inch line is plenty. Nice clean cut, not super clean, but so this will be going into a T fitting. I'll show you guys that shortly. So I'm just gonna take uh, measure and cut another one. The nice thing about these Flexzilla core <coughs> is that they work good in cold weather. I live in Alaska. In the wintertime, it gets super cold. These are gonna be in my vehicle all the time. <laughs> so I need them to be flexible. I don't need them to be all um, hold their memory. If they hold their memory, when you try to unravel them, it's not good. There you go, we have our two short ones. These are for the front tires. We'll go ahead and set them aside for now. Since we have so much extra <laughs> for my two long ones that go to the rear tire, I made it 12 foot, 12 feet because we have so much extra, but it's good to have extra. So right there. I love the color of this green neon, but I feel so bad because I know it's gonna get dirty when it's on the ground and stuff like that. It's gonna show dirt, but it's all good. Super nice. So we have two toll footer and then we have tons of extra and I'll probably make like uh, the short ones that go to the thing four feet or something working on the long ones one end is going to have this line with a tire chuck so that's what goes to the rear of the tire so it's pretty simple <coughs> just screw those screw those on the other end will go into a t fitting that connects to the front tires and then the also the line that goes to the air supply so these are some uh, reusable lines pop them out like that this just goes in. Super nice. This kind of helps the line from bending so much. Goes in like that. 
super simple, super easy. There's some online where people put like a, a nipple that goes in there and then this screws on. But I like this style better because you don't have to do any crimping. So that piece is very sharp. Put a little bit of lube on that and then goes into the line. So just like that. Oh, damn, it's tight in there. And the thing is that this is reusable. So if something ever happens, you can just cut it off. And that's why you won't have extra. And then this goes in. This will screw in like that. And then now you just get your pliers and screw this in. And that's going to create like a, uh, a press fitting. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. This is just a slip on, so this don't matter. So three quarter here. And I believe three quarter on the other one too. Nope, not three quarter. So it's a bit smaller. So this one's a bit smaller, probably a 17. I don't like using these vice because they're gonna slightly damage it. I didn't want to scratch or anything, but yeah, I don't want to use this. This is gonna damage it. So, so wrench on one side. You don't need to add any Teflon tape, guys. This is all compression fitting, like stuff. Uh, super nice. There it is, super tight, look at that. How awesome is that? <laughs> this hose is not going anywhere. Nice. This sleeve just goes right onto it, like that. Stays in there. Kind of slide, kind of slides out, but it stays in there. And now we'll go ahead and put some Teflon tape on that. And then it just screws into the tire chuck. So pretty simple. Let me go ahead and do this. Wrap it around. People get very messy with these and I like to keep it very clean. I'm still waiting for some parts for my compressor before I can modify it. So I'm not gonna modify my compressor yet. Just like that, thread seal it, tire chuck. And both, both of the tire chuck and the thread here, there are three quarter. So get two three quarter inch wrench and tighten them up. So just like that. They won't thread all the way to the max, so don't over tighten it. You can see how there's a, there's enough. It goes in like maybe three or four threads only. So don't think that you have to screw it in all the way in. Once it gets tight, you're good. So that's good. So that's what it looks like on one end, tire chuck. Super nice, tire chuck. And the other end will go into a T-fitting. hose chopped up the two rear main tires the two fronts we're gonna use some <coughs> three-way connector this is a quarter inch three-way splitter basically we're gonna have it this way um, this way goes into the rear tire this one goes into the front tire and then this one goes back to the front of the vehicle where the air compressor is <coughs> this kit came in two so you got two T's and they have these hose clamps. We're not gonna use these kind. I went ahead and ordered a kit. These are the air hose and these are crimp style. So we're gonna crimp them instead because supposedly these are better permanent and I like it. I was using them yesterday on my garden hose. They work amazing. So the first one is we're gonna go ahead and put this one in. <clears throat> this is for the rear tire. <sighs> Don't use your mouth. Oh, I forgot to put the hose in there. Don't forget your hose clamp first. Hose clamp. Okay. 
push it in all the way and then we'll go ahead and crimp them that's super nice the crimping is very nice i'm just trying to see if i want the top facing that way or facing in that way but i think i might have it facing outwards probably have it facing on the outside it's super easy it comes with the little crimp tool here this kit here is only like 30 bucks uh, i love it so far so just put it in like that and then we're going to crimp it about right here and just goes in between this piece here and you just pull just press it boom that's it it squeezes it in how awesome is that i love it man i can't believe i'm just now being <coughs> introduced to this stuff now it is pretty permanent so if you ever need to if you ever need to remove it you need to cut it open but look how that look how awesome that is man okay so the next one is the front tire so this is to the front tire this really is a great project guys they sell these kits you know these diy kits um they no these diy kits you can buy yourself or you can buy the one that's made already but it's nice to do it yourself because you know your own system you know your system you know, you know how to repair it now if you don't know how to do it it's totally fine you can go buy your own <laughs> you can buy the pre-made kits already but this is really awesome so that's the t this goes to the front tire it is a bit long but man like i said good for repairable so i'm gonna face the face it that way face it this way probably and also easier in the future if i need to remove it so we're right there boom look at that guys make sure you inspect it <coughs> make sure you inspect make sure everything looks good looks good looks good go just a little tighter we'll check for leaks once we do our first run we'll go ahead and spray some soapy water on it but so far i trust these already all right so we just need to build that one hose that goes to the air compressor and I'll go and measure that one. But that one you can do whatever size you want. It doesn't really matter. But for now we have this right here. Front tire. And then this one runs to the back tire. So how cool is that? It's still very light too. It's not super heavy yet. For the last piece of hose that goes to the end, the other side of the T-fitting. I went ahead with a 6 footer. Could have went, I probably could have gone a little bit shorter. But we'll go with 6 feet. <clears throat> this is the part that goes into your, um, your manifold. So the other side we'll go ahead and clamp that too front tire rear tire and then on this end we're gonna connect one of these quick release and this right here we're gonna leave it the way it is and this is gonna plug into the intake manifold this is what's left over off that 50 footer plenty plenty of hose left this is probably maybe i don't know eight feet so we'll go ahead and keep this for spare we might use some in the future maybe do some um quick uh, extension or something along that line or some other fancy stuff definitely love this stuff man really nice super light very flexible and supposed to hold up to the cold weather really really good which is really really important to me all right guys so now that we are done with <coughs> all the hoses you guys saw how everything is uh this is the end piece of it a quick disconnect we're gonna move on to the intake manifold when you buy the intake manifold it just comes in a three piece like that <clears throat> i went ahead and removed the top one and put a um a measurement i didn't want to go with digital because obviously i didn't want to deal with batteries so this is just a regular analog <clears throat> and first i also put a um <clears throat> on off switch this is to release the air down and open up and then a um, connector a male connector what i was gonna do originally was I was going to go f get a, I was going to put a, I was going to do something like this where I get this in, which is a female and put it to this guy here. I was going to do it like this so that I can plug it into this way. But then I thought about that and man, it just makes more, it just makes it more bulkier and more connections. I mean, it's nice to have a quick disconnect from the manifold, but this manifold is going to stay with the line all the time. <clears throat> so that is one way to do it. You can get a female piece that will screw into this quarter inch 
and then you can put it in like that if that makes sense which is gonna be bigger and a little bit bulkier so other people online were doing where they just take this piece and plug it straight to the manifold it's the same thread this is the same thread as this is so we're, that's what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna plug the two lines remove these guys out save them for another project and then we're just gonna plug them right into here and that's what it looks like or like that so take your two lines put it into your intake manifold um, you want to buy this piece here this doesn't come with the intake manifold this um, on off switch and I'll sh put this link in the video and this piece will plug into the um, air compressor I'll show you guys that um, which is for a quick disconnect I might have to make an extension core for this piece here to remove these you just use a three quarter three quarter just move it real quick you kind of want to hold it or if you have a if you have a bench vise you might want to put on a bench vise because it does have a lot of grip but yep probably have to get some lever but just remove this pretty self-explanatory when they come from the factory they come with some thread sealant so you want to just clean that out before you put your teflon tape in there Feel like I'm a mad scientist, machinist. <laughs> this is all simple stuff, nothing crazy, guys. If I can do it, you guys can do it. Take your three quarter and just tighten this bad boy down. Just be careful, don't damage anything. very hard to get a grip on it unless you have a vice so and I don't want to damage this red anodize <clears throat> so I don't want to I don't want to clamp onto that <clears throat> I think that's good I suggest for this hose that goes to the two lines I suggest next time you guys hook up this first and then hook it onto the intake manifold and then clamp it down to the T so that when you turn this it just makes it more easier if that makes sense guys so next time install this in first before you install it to the whole two line just so that it's easier to spin it's not a hassle now when you're spinning it you just have to spin all this just so that it's going around the right circle so little things to think about this is a 200 dollars kit now there you go how easy is that spent 150 bucks i'm gonna sell it for 300 bucks took me about maybe eh, if I, was, if I didn't film any of this, it'd probably take me no more than 30 minutes, 20 minutes at the most. So that is what it looks like, guys. Gauge, connection, air comes in. When the air comes in, you can have it shut off or on. This is uh, this is off right now. This is off, this is on, and this is off. So it's kind of nice. So we'll leave it on like that. Your tire pressure gauge, two lines out. One line goes to the front tire, very simple. My front tire, the line is about 35 inch, I think. I think 30 inch, yeah, we did 30 inch or so. It goes into the front line, which is plenty. And it's nice that it's kind of long because I don't want to put this on the ground when I air up. I'm gonna put this on top of like my bumpers and on top of my sliders and such like that just so it doesn't get dirty, um, just to prevent it from being on the ground. And then you got your long one. This is long enough for my Land Cruiser. And this is also long enough for my Tundra. Or if I need to air somebody up and they have like a full size truck, I can air them up without having to be too short. So you wanna make it versatile. And also if it gets damaged in the future, I can cut it down, fix it up. Here's the final product, just to give you guys a better visual look. <coughs> Gauges, two output, one input. <coughs> Front tire tire truck super nice super hard and then rear wheels analog gauge on off switch everything goes nicely everything's all crimped together no hose clamp these are the air they call it the, the air hose clamp air something along that line the front tire as well using the quick disconnect or not the quick disconnect but reusable these are reusable if this gets damaged here or somewhere down later the row 
cut it up, fix it up, reuse it. So it's a bit more expensive compared to the cheaper. Um, if you're to go with like just a nipple version and other style, um, it's it's worth going extra dollar and going with these guys. These uh, these reusable. I think they're about ten bucks each. So about forty dollars, forty five dollars, and the air chucks, super nice. That's gonna be it for this video DIY four way inflator for my Land Cruiser. I can't demonstrate on using it yet because I haven't modified my AC uh, my compressor yet. Once the rest of the kits comes in, I'm still waiting for a couple more fittings. Uh, before I can connect the quick disconnect and the pressure switch on and then we'll go ahead and do our test So the next video we'll go ahead and install this and do an actual test Using this uh, this kit here make sure that it doesn't leak and then we'll also see how fast this thing will um, Air up my Land Cruiser on 38. Hope you guys enjoy and again everything that I use today I'll put it in the video description. You guys can check it out on Amazon buy it it's about maybe 150 160 during the time of this filming so definitely cheaper doing it yourself and even though it's cheaper we're not losing quality this is still all high quality parts if you're to order someone else's kit it's a bit more expensive that's because it's already been done but this is super easy super useful i'll add links to all the hoses the fittings and all the crimp tools so catch you guys next time